nice having you again my friends here on Will Edutech and in this video we're going to be looking at the solution to question 11a part 2 taken from the CSEC math exam pass paper solutions January 2012 and in this video you will be learning how to use column vectors to calculate the midpoint G of a line segment AB and afterwards we'll be finding the column vector that represent the displacement or the movement from the point O which is the origin to the point G okay my friends feel free to ask any question that you may have if you're not sure about a particular issue in the lesson or you can also contact us at, on Facebook and here is our link below you can reach us at facebook.com slash will edutech In the previous video, in question 11a, part 1, we had looked at finding uh, the vector, uh, column vectors for O to A, which we have here, negative 1, 3, and in part B, we had O to B, which is equal to 5 over 1, and in part C, we have B to A, which is negative 6, 2. Those are the column vectors. Now, I've just made note of the answers from that uh, video the solutions to part one so that just in case we need to use any of them we have them at our disposal now here they're stating in part two my friends given that g is the midpoint of the line a b write as column vector in the form x y a part a b to g and part b o to g now basically my friends based on what they're saying here if G is the midpoint, it simply means my line segment AB. Well, they have stated it in the form AB. But, you know, a line segment, you can call it. Uh, it doesn't matter the order that the letters uh, are, are in. So I could also say B to A instead of AB. So my line segment AB, I have a point that lies on my line. And that's the point G. Okay, so the point G on this green line here, the line segment AB or BA, I have a point lying on that line. And it is lying in the middle that's what they mean by the midpoint it is lying halfway in between a and b or it is lying on the middle of this line a b or b a cool now let's just quickly uh, look at that now basically my friends by intuition or by the general concept of what is happening if I need to find the vector of b to a if I, b to g okay my friends we can um, based on what we had found before for example we found b to a and b to a was equal to negative 6 2 as we have here now if they are if they are stating that the line segment um b a we have a point there on it g that is halfway in between a and b then it simply means then uh, if i can work out the vector from b to g then we will have we will know the the exact point on the line where g falls okay so basically what i'll be doing in part two here my friends let's just change the color quickly so in part two in part two to find what I need to find now I need to find B to G so my B to G since B B to G now since I've found since I've found B to A and the point G is halfway in between then it simply means then that if I take a half of my b to a hope this makes sense of my b to a then i'll know the point where my g will lie so b to a we know that so really i'm taking a half of my vector negative six two okay so basically we are multiplying by a scalar so i am saying a half of negative six so a half of negative six basically what i'm saying here let, let's just do a little working down here you're saying a half times negative six okay over one so you know that basically this would cancel out two into itself once two into negative six we have a negative three there so obviously our answer there would be negative three then i'm taking a half of two so my answer here is negative 3. So we have it there. Then I'm really taking a half of 2, my friends. So I'm multiplying a half by each number inside the bracket here. So a half of 2, we know that is 1. So basically, my friends, my distance B to G is a half of B to A. And the vector that would take me to B to G would be negative 3, 1. So quickly, we could look at that. For example, let's say this is my point. 
I am at G, so I need to move negative 3 on my X and 1 on my Y, positive 1. So if I'm here at the point B, I'm going to move negative 3 on the X. So from here, this would be 1. That would be my first position. Then that would be 2. Then this would be 3. And then I am going up now. I've moved negative 3 on my X. That's a left direction. So I'm going up now on my Y, 1. Okay, so this is the point G. So we could just quickly mark that point. Let me use a yellow. So this point here, my friends, this point, and I'm marking it in yellow. This would be my point G. And if you notice, it's, it's, it's approximately halfway in between A and B. So there we go. We have found a uh, BG. So they're asking us to find O to G. Well, again, we're just simply go going to position ourselves at the origin, which is O. So from my origin, I'm going to move to the point G. So obviously, from my origin, I would have to move my X value to get to G. Obviously, I would have to move in a right direction. So from O, I am moving one, two places. Okay. So let's just quickly get our pointers again so from my pencil rather so from the point O really I am moving one that's one and that's two on my X and if you notice G is just above this point so I've just moved from let's just make a note quickly O to G I have moved this would be equal to I have moved two on my X, so let's make a note of that. And then from this point now, I'm going up on my Y. So from this point here on my X axis, I'm going up one place, and then I'm going up another place. And if you notice, I've, I'm exactly on the point G now. So we have moved one, two units on the Y axis. So that's two. So my friends, that's my answer. Uh, o to G is two, two. So that's our answer, and it's it's pretty much it's pretty much that easy. Uh, hopefully you this was helpful, and feel free to ask any questions if you're still not sure, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, bye bye.